Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast. My name is Dr. David Ayers. Let's just dive right in. Today's episode is going to be converting milligrams to meter squared, I'm sorry, to ppms, to parts per million. Um, you will also see at times where a sample has to be uh, into parts per billion, parts per trillion. It's, it's, just a, um, it's just a matter of a math issue. I like to set up systems so because i am a flawed human i want to I want to use something like a excel spreadsheet just kind of something to to make sure that it's only that i can say i've typed it in right so it's just not me trying to hurry up and get through something i've typed it in right but let's sit down understand the formula go over a couple of uh, examples so let's talk about the reason why that we're going to get this so there's a lot of times when we take a sample of course when the, the um, sample results come back in milligrams per meter cubed uh, there are, are also times when we get it back from the lab itself of course it's going to be expressed in that and while that's that's you know that's really cool and awesome and nice it doesn't always help us out to really understand what a hazardous atmosphere is so a lot of times these things are are real hard to picture and understand but, but but what we do know is that when we convert it over to um ppms it's really easy to go back and uh look up exactly what is and what's not considered a, a hazardous atmosphere out there so um when you do take these samples uh temperature and atmosphere can also play a uh influence on the calculation in today's example we're, we're just going to assume that it's not part of the calculation so let's go ahead and uh, just get started so when we look at what's considered a, a permissible exposure limit by osha it's, it's going to mostly be expressed in parts per million. That's not always a like 100% hard and fast rule, but for the most part it is. And also if you have a operating permit, you have something else out there. You have to figure out if they're asking you to, uh, to monitor the atmosphere, what they are looking for also. So it seems like most commonly it's parts, parts per million. And that's why we're going to sit down and go over this whole thing. Uh, one of the things that we also need is we have to know that molecular weight for the chemicals that we're sampling out there. Uh, you're not going to find where one weight is going to cover a family of chemicals, so you really have to dive in deep and really understand what we have on the screen now are going to be four common chemical um, molecular weights. And this is if you were going to uh, operate a place that has a operating permit, and they may be also asking you to tell us uh, how much ozone you're generating or carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and also methane. So when we kind of sit down and um, uh, look at how we're going to do this, sometimes we're worried about the people at the plant and we're taking a sample. Sometimes not only are we worried about the people at the plant, but our operating permit says you must go back and sample for the following chemicals. You know? So we know that we have the uh, like molecular weight. And if we look at the um, example, we have ozone at 48 grams per mole, carbon monoxide, 28.01 grams per mole, carbon dioxide, 44.01 grams per mole, and then methane at 16.04 grams per mole. And if you go back and look up the OSHA permissible exposure, um, limit over there it's going to ozone is 0.1 ppms carbon monoxide 50 ppms carbon dioxide 500 and methane 1000 that does not actually have a OSHA permissible exposure limit the only thing that's relatively close is called a NIOSH recommended exposure limit so it's not actually enforceable by law but that doesn't mean that they can't say as part of your permit to operate for your plant your factory your insert anything that you must meet the following um, levels out there so let's do a little math here so you know uh, in this first example we're going to look at a large industrial site and so we're trying to figure out the ppms so we already know that it's going to be 24.45 and that's going to be what our um what we came back with 
uh, uh, milligrams per meter squared, and then uh, times that by 100, divide it by 48, and that's how we're going to come up with a ppm of 50.938, which is really freaking high. You know, uh, if we look at a uh, ozone for a city street that's out there, uh, sometimes of course your ozone will actually, if you're just walking down a city street, just be um, exceeded just because of all the mobile pollution that's there, the cars and trucks and buses, you know, and all that kind of kind of good stuff then. So we'll go through that same exact example, of course, except we only have a 0.7 um, for the reading then, and then we come back with a 0.357, which is, of course, over the uh, OSHA permissible exposure limit of 0.1. Let's look at our next example here, carbon monoxide. So we're going to look at a large industrial plant first. And so with this one, our, our sample came back with 75 um, milligrams per meter um, cubed. And, and then now we have to go back and convert it over into PPMs. So when we plug it in the formula, 24.45 times 75, that's what the sample was divided by 28.01, we come back with PPMs of 65.468. This exceeds the um, that limit of uh, 50. And let's look at one if we're just kind of walking down a city street. Again, cars, buses, you know, uh, there's a lot of different things that can add to the carbon monoxide and not just your everyday background stuff, but we're adding to it with um, things like mobile sources and all that. So we use the same exact formula, but on this one, it was only 29 milligrams per meter cubed. We then come back with a PPM of 25.314 for this example. Um, so that was just two examples on how that we would go back. And like all things, you can just take this formula as long as you know that molecular weight and you have what your um, sample came back with, you can then go back and calculate it and figure out the PPMs. So um, again, I'm a flawed human, so I like to come up with an automated system so I can literally say, as long as I type it in right, it's gonna come back good. And it's not me trying to uh, think about a formula and I'm writing stuff down on paper, you know, and I'm like doing stuff by hand and all that. That's, while that's a um, Another way of doing it, for me, I worry about just being as, as accurate as I possibly can on this. So that is it for today's episode number 39, converting milligrams per meter cubed to parts per million. My name is Dr. David Ayers. Thank you for joining me and have a safe day.